The time has finally come to make the ultimate laptop corral. It sounds fine. Let's let's do some gaming. But before that, it's time for a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an amazing online learning community with many skills for you to rummage through and learn. Look at all them skills. You can learn about building confidence or doing watercolors in the woods. Art journaling for self-care is something that Anna's been getting into lately. I would recommend checking out Unlocking Your Potential, five exercises to build creative confidence by Emma Gannon, where she shows you how to feel better about your creativeness. If all of this sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to join Skillshare. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now there are gonna be multiple stages to this modification. First, we're gonna have like a reasonable modification using these industrial strength Noctua fans, which are, they're a pretty serious bit of kit. They can spin up to 3000 RPM and have many CFMs of airflow. But after that, we're gonna see what the ultimate laptop Corel can do with these Delta Blow Emotron fans, which are apparently the fans that Arnold Schwarzenegger uses to cool his libido. But before we get into any of that, let's see what the just stock little loser Corel can do uh, so that we have like a point of reference before we start cutting things up. After about 15 minutes of gaming, we have just under 80 degrees Celsius on the CPU and just over 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU. So yeah, let's open up that laptop Corel and see if we can get better results. Now the first step before we start modifying this laptop Corel is just to take it apart to see how much we can actually do without whipping out a Dremel. We're almost definitely gonna have to cut these fans out uh, to kind of add these Noctuas over here, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see what this thing's made of. So with that, let's kind of tear it down. Let's see if the screws that we took off means that we can now pry it open. Oh yeah, that's just what holds the RGB in place. Uh, let me get the front off and see how these fans are actually connected. There we go. Hey, there we go. Okay, so we've got those off. And then as we can see, these fans um, are barely attached. You can see that they just use fan headers over here. So we can really easily remove the little fans from this little fan hub. Now the bigger fans are also removable. You can see that they're on like a little plastic clip thing here. Um, these are not very sturdy fans. So I could pretty easily remove these. Wow, they, that really doesn't want to let go. Oh, come on, yeah. Hey, there's a screw that we can just undo. I didn't have to Hulk smash anything. There we go. We've gotten rid of all the fans. That's very useful. And this is what the shell looks like that we're left with. It's actually pretty deep, right? So what I'm thinking is that instead of just like gluing the fan onto the back here, we can actually just cut all of this elevated bit of plastic off and then mount the fan in the actual Corel. It is very much not tall enough. Now, after a lot of measuring and soul searching and whatever, I've decided that I'm gonna be quite lame about how I mount these Noctuas because there isn't enough space in the actual cavity of this laptop stand to accommodate the girth of the Noctua. Uh, so I could cut it out and stuff, but the problem is that there's a pretty big size difference between this Noctua fan and the Delta fan that we have here. And if I do any hasty cutting, I may make it really difficult to properly mount the Delta fan in there. So what I'm gonna do is use the age old solution to every problem ever, duct tape. Yeah. 
you know it's a professional duct tape taping solution if you have the like semi-cut corner bit of duct tape. Then you know it's a real pro duct taper. See, look at that. Oh, beautiful engineering right there. Wow, that looks like something designed and built by Noctua. Now we just need a second fan and, and then we're good. Hey, there we go. We've got two beautifully mounted Noctua fans on the laptop Corel. Uh, plugging it in is going to be really easy. I'll do that just now. The only thing that I still want to do here is deal with these funnels. Um, because there's going to be a lot of wasted air going through these holes. The solution to the whole air funnel thing was exactly as lazy as mounting the fans. Uh, I've just used some duct tape to close up the holes. It doesn't need to be particularly airtight, it just needs to offer more resistance than the mesh in front. And then finally, I'm just going to use this adapter abomination to plug the fans into the laptop corral. Okay, so we've got some arguably useless tape ducts going here, so let's put the mesh back on and see how much this helps. My money's on not very much. Okay, it's time to fire it up. Um, the actual fan shrouds on the base of the laptop don't perfectly line up with the kind of tape vents that I have. It's good enough. There's definitely going to be additional airflow from the Noctuas. So yeah, let's see. Let's see if it works. They are in fact not running. No. Okay. Oh, this thing can't power them. Unfortunately, I had to hook up an external power supply. I was really hoping I could power it off the Corel. I could probably do it if I spliced connectors onto the fan hub in the Corel, but I don't know if it would be if that would be able to power the Noctuas either. So yeah, let's see if this works. Oh yes, all I had to do was use a different splitter and now we're in business. But there is so much air moving in here. There's like a wind blowing out of this thing. Okay, let's see how that runs. That's not done a huge amount, has it? Although, to be fair, the CPU and GPU core frequencies are consistently a little bit higher, so that's something. I mean, maybe if the vents are more lined up, it would be better, but whatever. Let's just go straight to the big daddy. Before I start mounting this delta into the Corel, I first want to see if this Molex to fan connector that I have here can actually handle this delta fan. Because just to put it into perspective, that other Noctua fan spins up to 3000 RPM, which is very fast. This can go up to over 8000 RPM. But that's not the most terrifying metric, because as far as power draw goes, or current draw, that Noctua fan uses 0.3 amps to run, whereas this uses 3.72 amps. That's more than 10 times the input current to get this fan running. You can actually burn out a fan header on your motherboard if you try and power one of these. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping this works, and I, I am I am terrified, quite frankly. So let's switch on the power supply and hope that the world doesn't end. Okay, it wants to be tied down. <laughs> okay, so um, I didn't have anything to mount it to, so I've just kind of duct taped it to the table. <laughs> Hopefully that holds it. Let's let's try it out. Whoa! That is awesome! Now that I've managed to tame my arousal, I've run into a bit of a problem. I can only find one of these Molex to fan connector things. I have another one, but it's missing somewhere in the detritus that is my life. Uh, luckily, the local computer shop did have some in stock. Well, I say luckily. They only had the world's most pathetic Molex to fan connectors. I mean, look at that. Is this really even trying? Uh, well, anyway, after a quick Google, I found that this wouldn't be enough to power the Delta monster beast. So what I ended up doing was ripping one of the connectors apart and then stuffing an extra pin into this connector. I couldn't get it all the way in, but it does make contact. Uh, yeah, so now I've got two of these rubbish connectors spliced into one and it works. I've tested it and it works. So now we can run two of these fans. Uh, now I just need to get them mounted into the corral. 
I would say that that is a very professionally savaged hole in a bit of plastic. Uh, I'm actually not going to show you the process because I don't want to shame any other craftsmen <laughs> watching this video. Uh, so now I just need to caveman savage another hole on the other side and then we'll be good. Again, I'm going to censor the process. So we're just going to jump to me duct taping the fans into place again, like a real craftsman. I think it would hardly be an exaggeration to say that this is the most powerful laptop Corel in the world. I can't wait to see how this thing's gonna perform. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put on the mesh so that it looks like an everyday laptop Corel and uh, yeah, see what happens. Okay, so it's time to, to test fire the world's most powerful laptop Corel. Um, I did briefly kind of joke with the thought of like taping the laptop down onto the laptop Corel, but that's stupid, right? It's not going to be able to push it off the stand. Um, so yes, I am going to power it up and I'm terrified. That's very reasonable. I think that... You know, people get used to the sound of like vacuum cleaners and stuff in their house. So I think it's actually a very practical noise level. Um, it sounds fine. Let's, let's do some gaming. Now that is more like the kind of temperature improvement I was expecting from something like a laptop Corel. Um, after this, I moved the laptop over to high performance mode where we got even higher GPU core frequencies with not a significant increase in temperatures. So yeah, I'd say that this has been a success. Yes. So it's worked really well, uh, and it's got the added benefit of being highly practical with reasonable noise levels. So yeah, all you need to do to get almost desktop RTX 2060 core frequencies out of your Razer Blade is manhandle a couple of Delta fans into a laptop Corel. Uh, which brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Check out our merch linked in the description below. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.